We'll stay with us. We'll stay in Lagos, where the state government says it is taking significant steps to improve in waste management across the state with a plan to acquire 100 compressed natural gas trucks. The trucks will be used by waste collectors to enhance sanitation and hygiene in the state. Esther Mokwariola has more details. Lagos, a bustling city of more than 23 million people, generates a staggering 5.46 million tons of waste annually. This massive waste production has led the Lagos Waste Management Authority to seek innovative solutions to tackle the growing challenge. At a recent forum, the Waste Management Agency, alongside corporate organizations and private sector players, discussed the procurement of smart bins for every household. Adopt a bin, yes, we can buy, but this is more for the, for the corporate organizations in this room today. You can use part of your corporate social responsibility. And we all know that any amount you spend on corporate social responsibility, you will not pay that tax. Instead of paying that tax, why don't you adopt this bin and buy in thousands, in millions, and let us distribute this to all the tenements in Lagos State? Uh, we cannot but just, you know, embrace this idea. It's all to galvanize towards achieving that one goal a cleaner and more sustainable Lagos. These bins are expected to revolutionize waste collection and disposal. Because of the features, you are talking about a smart bin, a smart intelligent bin. It has an RFID tag. It's pinned to your house. That means it's associated with your house. If someone steals it, we can trace it. In addition, we can tell when it's lifted by the PSP operator. So if they're not coming on time, we can tell from the Loma office that this PSP is not working. So it gives you a sense of security that, you know, you have a recourse if you're not getting value for the money that you're paying for. But our major concern lies in the fact that it's imported. It shouldn't be imported. We should develop our homegrown technology. And when we do that, we create employment, we create jobs, we get out um, from the streets, the boys and girls, adults that are jobless from the streets. With these initiatives, Lagos is pushing towards a cleaner, more sustainable environment. As Tamakwariola, TVC News. And to other stories, the Minister of State for Labor and Productivity, Ikeri Kaunye George, has asked the governors to prioritize agriculture, health, as well as securing lives and property. The minister stated this at a free medical outreach she organized in Abia State. Nina Gabriel reports. Every day, the indigent people in the society face different medical challenges and they find it difficult to access medical care due to the cost. Here, Udoka and Chukweze, among others, narrate their story. I know pretty read. And I, if I look for anything at all, you go, you come glad for my eyes. Into four years and now. Three years and now, but due to lack of cash, but sometimes he will be complaining, and her novel will just swell up. I really thank God because they worry me. I know they see eyes. I know they see well. As part of efforts to improve the health and well-being of people, the Minister of State for Labour and Productivity organized a free medical outreach for residents of Omonochi. See how uh, people will be able to uh, live well if their health is not good enough. They take it for granted that nothing happens. You just uh, live life. Medical intervention was provided for patients with hernia, cataracts, among others. Commonness is called senile cataract. It happens with old age. So when the vision, visual function is impaired, the eye is checked. And uh, this surgery, maybe in, uh, in Abuja where I come from, it ranged from 250 to 1 point something million, depending on the type that is done. The prevalent medical cases here is hypertension, diabetes. Some of them have upper respiratory tract infection, typhoid. Then among the men, we've seen some of them having cancer. 
We've also seen some of them, some of the women having cancer of the breast. We've seen about four cases. With the popular saying, health is wealth, the provision of health care facilities and intervention for persons who cannot afford it will go a long way in reducing the rate of fatalities. Medical doctors have also emphasized the need for regular checkups, especially among the elderly. Nena Gabriel, TVC News, Umunochi, Abia State. The 2024 edition of the Business Fair of the Federation of Business Women Entrepreneurs, an ECOWAS founded regional organization, has been concluded in Lagos with its site set and fostering great integration and cross border trade opportunities. Representatives of the ECOWAS Commission, Anthony Ilumelu, stressed that February's role in promoting economic integration, peace, and governance in West Africa. With the Commissioner for Economic Affairs and Agriculture, Masanje Tore Litze, called for the prioritization of the ECOWAS protocol on the free movement of people, goods, and services to unlock the region's vast potential, stating that seamless cross border trade will boost regional growth. Other key players at the event stress that women in business require easier access to funds and government support, adding more initiatives to create awareness. Those we have a, a scheme, the Equals Free Organization Scheme, which uh, is a very good uh, initiative you know, to accompany uh, the stress for the trade. The woman the woman and the what is the the private sector, the engine room of the economy. When you say private sector is the engine of the economy, I said the woman. And if you look at, if you, if you recall, during the COVID period, all that we are doing is SMEs were the ones that were trying to A lot of milestone achievement, yes. We've done a lot of success in bringing our women together. We've successfully bringing them together to do transborder trade, to exhibit their goods, to make sure that their goods are ready for export. Networking is the most important thing. That's why we are here today. Education is the cornerstone of progress. It empowers individuals, fosters innovation, and builds the foundation for a brighter future. These were the words of the governor of Lagos State, Babajidi Songwulu, who was represented by Professor Yemisi Omoyele at uh, the conferment of honorary degrees to outstanding individuals across various fields uh, by the High Stone uh, Global University. While the governor commended the recipient for the exemplary work, They've done in the society, also charged them to take this at a call to continue to improve in their various fields of endeavors. The conformance of, of honorary degree is not just a recognition of past achievements, but a call to continued excellence and a commitment to making a positive impact on the world. Nigeria. It's a country that is great. There's other that some people are giving wrong name to Nigeria. There are some good people in Nigeria that have invested and contributed to the community development. So in view of that, we feel that those people that deserve, we need to be recognized. For me, it's a fulfillment that's a, that's a part of me that is rejoiced. And also, I'm great to have this a confirmation award. The theatre production which uh, depicts the thoughtful dramatization on fight for gender justice in the society has been showcased in the nation's capital. The Girl Child Value Support Initiative, which taps into Nigeria's vibrant performing arts and entertainment industry, tells the story on the rights of women and girls in the country. The play titled Unbroken Voices is written by Hanifa Abdurrahan, and produced by the Girl Child Value Support Initiative. It is the first ever street theatre performance in the Federal Capital Territory and it explores the complex inequalities girls' children face in the country. 
project is a whole project. It's called Advocacy for Gender Justice, using different forms of art to promote the rights of women and girls. And this is just one of the things that you're going to be seeing. The strong message I'm really trying to pass here with this stage play is to change the stereotype and to change the views that people have when it comes to um, gender justice and trying to see how the rights of women and girls yeah, are basically enforced and just trying to like bring an, an end to violence against women. That's the main message that this, this is trying to pass. A few girls have been trained through arts, through acting, through storytelling, um, through uh, visual arts and they are going to use all these tools to drive the agenda to fight against um, gender-based violence, female genital mutilation, all of the um, issues and, and uh, violence that concerns women and girls.